I am Jeff Ober and welcome to another one of Smart Packager videos. Today we're going to go over an introduction to at V using the Smart Packager suites. We are going to learn what an at V is. We're going to then create an at V application using the Smart Packager suite. We're then going to switch over to the Microsoft at V server and then we're going to learn how to publish an at V application. Once that's done, we'll switch over to the client. Uh, we'll see what happens when we download an app v application, where it downloads to, and then what happens when we actually run the virtual app. And last, we are going to edit that app v application using the Smart Packager Suite editor. Application virtualization allows applications to be deployed, streamed, in real time to any client from a virtual application server. It removes the need for traditional local installations of applications. Application data that is stored on the virtual application server is installed, streamed to the client cache on demand or when first used. The app v stack sandboxes the executional environment so the application does not make any changes directly to the underlying operating system's file system and or registry, but rather contained in an application specific bubble. At v applications are also sandboxed from each other so that different versions of the same application can be run under at v concurrently. We will cover some tips and tricks later, but first let's get right into it. Uh, we're going to create an AtV package for Microsoft Project 2013. We're then going to publish the AtV package for Microsoft Project 2013. And then from a client, we're going to download and run uh, the virtual Project 2013. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to our Discover machine. This is basically a clean and quiet machine with nothing installed except a uh, scalable software smart packager. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create a new at v package, uh, and we're going to do this by using the Discover method. Uh, I'm going to click on Discover a new package. That'll bring up our Discovery tool. From here, I'll say Next. Uh, it's going to do a quick little system check to make sure that there's nothing in the background that's going to run and cause any issues. Uh, and then from here, uh, it'll tell us what's running that could cause issues and allow us to go ahead and disable it. Uh, I can right click and stop the background intelligence service as well as the Windows Defender and the Windows Update. Uh, at this point, everything is uh, successfully passed. I have a green light and we can go ahead and start the process. We'll press next. We're going to create a at v package this time. So I'm going to check the at v package option. I'm going to give it a name, uh, which is going to be project 2013. Uh, from here, we don't really have to do any advanced options. The uh, at v packages are pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and stick to the defaults and make this as simple as possible. I'm going to click next and start discovery. And at that point, I'm going to go ahead and launch our Office Professional 2013 package. Alright, I'll go ahead and accept the agreement and I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to take the defaults. I'll just hit the install now button and let that install. Alright, looks like uh, project has finished. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the installer, verify that my shortcuts are here. And uh, there it is, project 2013. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and press the stop discovery and go into the analyzing portion. All right, this is our discovery results. This is what's going to be put into our virtual application package. Um, since this is a clean and quiet machine, I don't really have to go through and see if there's any garbage in there, but uh, that's basically the premise of the screen to see what's going to be uh, inside of your package. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and press next and go ahead and generate the, uh, the virtual application. All right, let's transition over to our at v administrative console and let's go ahead and add in that virtual package that we created earlier for project 2013. Uh, simply done, just click on the add or upgrade packages up here in the corner and then browse to the folder where we placed our virtual package. Uh, for me, it was here in this RC6 folder in uh, project 2013. Uh, you can see the output from the smart packager. I'll go into this at v folder and we can see the at v file itself. I'll go ahead and double click that and you just want to make sure that it's a valid UNC path, that the uh, the web browser that you're using doesn't try to put in a fake path. Uh, make sure it's um, uh, accessible and read by everybody that's going to require to install it and 
hit add. Uh, you can see we have a green light there and I can go ahead and close that. Uh, the next thing you want to do uh, is uh, go ahead and specify what Active Directory security groups are allowed to access this package. Uh, that's easy enough. You right click, go to edit Active Directory access and add in your security group. In my case I'm going to uh, add in my at v uh, and go ahead and grant access to that. Hit close. And then the last thing that we need to do is go ahead and publish it. So I'll right click, click on publish, and now we can go to the client. Okay, let's flip over to the client and let's see what we have. Uh, we can begin by clicking on the at v GUI. Uh, from here, if you'd like, uh, you have an option of clicking the update button, which will skip the refresh interval and uh, immediately publish any um, virtual applications that you've got. Uh, once that's done, you can click on the virtual apps and see what virtual applications are published to this client. In this case, it's our project 2013 that we built earlier. Uh, and what happens is the shortcuts will come down. You'll see the shortcuts appear on the, the, on the client itself. Uh, I can go into the start menu and then here you can see our Microsoft Office 2013 with the uh, project shortcut. You can see this is new, just added. Uh, from here you can either click on the shortcut uh, which will initiate the replication. It will actually copy the, uh, the application from the server down to the client or you can hit a download button. Uh, I previously downloaded it to save time uh, but uh, the repair would say download on a fresh install. Uh, and then uh, you can cache it to the local hard drive. And by the way, uh, even though it is streaming from the server, it does keep a local cache on the hard drive. Uh, you can find that and see program data and then here's your at v folder inside of your at v folder uh, you can see the two uh, at v's uh, applications that I have cached to this machine uh, this would be the uh, the project 2013. I can double click on this all the way down to the root in the virtual file system. From here you can see all the the program files folders, the common app data folders uh, and so on. All right once that's all done, we can go ahead and launch our virtual application. And then as you can see from the desktop's perspective, it looks as if it's a locally installed app. Uh, you get the, the project comes up, uh, activation, I'm not going to activate this, this is a lab. And then from here, uh, you can go ahead and click on a blank project or whatever you need to do with your virtual application. Okay, let's take a look at the editing capabilities of the Smart Packager Suite. From the Package Editor, we can right click on an at v application and go down to the Edit. As you can see, an editor, very similar to the MSI editor, sans a few MSI specific panes, uh, comes up. From the General, we can see all the generic properties of the at v application. From the File pane, I can expand and explore the file structure. I can go down and view the file structures as well as the files that are within those, and I can remove a file, or I can press the Add button and either add a single file or a folder of files which would preserve any internal file structure. We have a registry editor where I can expand and view the registry keys and even change some of their, their values. Uh, for instance, if I needed to change a value in an ODBC connection, you can see I have access to that here. Uh, we have a shortcut pane where we can modify or change the locations of your at v shortcuts as well as services where applicable. Uh, it's also note that we can edit not only our at v applications but any at v applications. All right, just a few tips and tricks before we end today's session. Uh, first off, if you have a 32-bit or x86 application, it really needs to be discovered on a x86 uh, operating system platform, uh, vice versa logically for the 64-bit, uh, but uh, that can't be overstated enough. Uh, the it's discovering a 32-bit application on a 64-bit uh, discovery machine can cause a lot of uh, hardship uh, when it comes to creating the sandbox and publishing it through AtV. Uh, another thing, and this comes through for labs, uh, in, in the labs it's, it's kind of annoying when you publish an application and the client doesn't pick that up right away. Uh, there is a global publishing interval setting inside of the at v uh, GPO that can be adjusted, especially inside of your labs, uh, to make that a little quicker. And third, just kind of more of a, an FYI type stuff, uh, you can actually see the, uh, the local app v content or sandboxes. They're stored on the local computer. Uh, they're inside of the local app data slash app v folder. And then here I've got a screenshot. Uh, in, in this case on Windows 7, it's uh, C program data at v, and then you can see all of the different uh, quote unquote sandboxes for all the different applications. Uh, if you browse in there, you can see the virtual file system and, uh, and so on. All right, in summary, uh, we 
covered basically what that V application is. Obviously, there's a lot more details, uh, but uh, and this is uh, kind of geared to be a short video, so we just did a quick overview. Uh, we created an AtV application using the Scalable Smart Packager Discovery uh, for a, a Microsoft project. Uh, we went ahead and published that uh, AtV application that we uh, that created, and then we went over to the client, and then uh, I showed you how to download uh, cache on demand, uh, first time run, and so on, uh, and then actually run the virtual application uh, on the client. I thank you very much for your time. I hope this was informative. Uh, and then please visit us at scalablesmartpackager.com for more information. Uh, thanks, and have a nice day.